Hello there guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video, I am going to be giving you my player ratings from our 3-1 defeat to Chelsea yesterday in the FA Cup semi-final. As you already know, I've given you my match reaction, you know, already. So, David De Gea, he's going to get a 2 out of 10. You know, David De Gea made two calamitous mistakes in the game. Um, in reality, David De Gea should have saved Olivier Giroud's shot and especially he should have saved Mason Mount's shot. And some people said, you know, David De Gea was accountable for Chelsea's third goal as well. Uh, Solskjaer has come out and defended David De Gea, but he has said on the other hand that David De Gea does need to raise his game. Alan Shearer gave his verdict on it and Alan Shearer said that David De Gea needs to be dropped. And he says Manchester United do need to find a replacement for him. Now, a lot of people saying that Sergio Romero should start ahead of David De Gea. Um, like I said, though, in the last couple of years, David De Gea has been a liability for Manchester United. You know, reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he has made. This has now been his ninth season at the football club. You know, David De Gea is approaching his 10th year at Manchester United. And David De Gea has made 402 appearances now for Man United in all competitions. Don't forget he's already overtaken Peter Schmeichel on appearances. <coughs> uh, but Solskjaer you know, was talking about David De Gea not too long ago, saying that he has been the best goalkeeper in the world for the last 9 or 10 years. And, you know, reflecting on what he's achieved at the football club, he is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world overall. But at this present time, he's definitely not the best goalkeeper in the world because, you know, David De Gea has won everything here domestically. You know, he's won individual awards reflecting on his good performances over the years. So there's a lot of Manchester United fans now saying that David De Gea does need to be sold. You know, he's been with us since the Alex Ferguson era. You know, we paid 17, was it 17 or 18 million pounds in from Atletico Madrid back in 2011. But if we was to sell David De Gea, we'd still get quite a lot more than, you know, the 18 million pounds that we paid for him from Atletico Madrid. Maybe we could get 50, maybe even 60 million pounds for him. But I said, you know, when David De Gea does eventually leave Manchester United, he will go back to Spain. The main explanations is because he was born in Spain, his relatives are from Spain, and he began his footballing career in Spain. Obviously, you know, David De Gea is the highest paid at the football club, and I think he's the highest paid goalkeeper in the world because I think he's on 375 grand a week. He signed his four-year deal back in September last year. Back in 2015, David De Gea was close to joining Real Madrid, but due to a fax machine, you know, the deal never materialised in that. Uh, possibly, you know, Dean Henderson could be our number one for next season. Uh, quite a few weeks ago, Solskjaer was talking about Dean Henderson, saying that in the foreseeable future, Dean Henderson will be England's number one and Manchester United's number one goalkeeper. But he said um, that Dean Henderson is not yet ready to become Man United's number one. He's on loan with Sheffield United at the moment. And I think he's done very, very well um, with Sheffield United. You know, he's been their player of the season. Dean Henderson's had quite a few other loan spells as well with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. Um, we actually know got him from Carlisle back in 2011 at just um, the age of 14. So we've got a big decision to make now on David De Gea, we really, really have. But David De Gea did recently say that he's intending on staying at the football club for several years and he is in his late 20s. So David De Gea, you know, he's going to get a 2 out of 10. Anwan wan -Bissaka, he's going to get a 4 out of 10. I thought Anwan wan -Bissaka had a very, very poor game yesterday. I thought he looked very, very exposed. I thought he was a uh, forced back deep by Marco Alonso for the vast majority of that first half. And I think he lacked concentration quite a few times in Dan wan -Bissaka. And, you know, in the last few games, Dan wan -Bissaka's looked a bit off the pace. So do you think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to rest him? Overall, I still think he's enjoyed an exceptional season for Manchester United. You know, we got him for £45 million from Crystal Palace last summer. So weren't too good. Uh, Victor Lindelof. Now I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought very poor performance again from Lindelof. 
Um, he was definitely accountable for Olivier Giroud's first goal because he completely lost his man, did Victor Lindelof. And recently, you know, Victor Lindelof has been making a lot of mistakes. You know, I wouldn't consider selling him. You know, I would keep him at Manchester United, Lindelof. You know, this has now been his third season at the football club. You know, we got him under the Jose Mourinho where, you know, we paid £30 million for him from Benfica. A lot of aspects of his game have improved, you know, flexing how long he's been here, but I think, you know, in quite a few games, you know, he's looked very, very inconsistent as Victor Lindelof. Um, Harry Maguire, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought he was also very, very poor. Made mistakes in the game yesterday. Also, to uh, he, the own goal. Um, Chelsea's third goal came from an own goal from Harry Maguire. And I just thought he was very, very poor was Harry Maguire. You know, I thought um, Olivier Giroud, I thought Olivier Giroud had Harry Maguire in his pocket. Harry Maguire's had quite a few bad games as a Manchester United player. Um, a lot of people say that we overpaid for Harry Maguire, you know, because we did get him from Leicester last summer for £80 million. He's the second most expensive signing at the club and he's the most expensive centre-half in the world. <coughs> but yeah, very, very poor game. Uh, Eric Bay going to give him a 5 out of 10. Uh, Bay actually, you know, started ahead of Victor Lindelof, but Lindelof obviously, you know, came on because Bay went off with that head injury. You know, Bay collided heads with Zuma, and then moments later collided heads with Harry Maguire. I think the good news is regarding Eric Bay is that his head injury is not too severe. And Eric Bay, you know, he's very, very injury prone and that's only really my element of concern about him. But prior to that, you know, he is a very, very good centre half, is Eric Bay. Uh, a lot of United fans would say Bay is their preference over Victor Lindelof. You know, this has now been Bay's fourth season at Manchester United. Um, like I said, we paid £30 million in from Villarreal back in 2016. You know, he was actually no Jose Mourinho's first signing. There's been, there were stories coming out a few weeks ago saying that, you know, we could end up loaning Eric Bay out. Yeah, um, Brandon Williams, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought Brandon Williams had a poor game, you know, didn't really show much attacking intent. Uh, Chelsea got in behind Brandon Williams far too easily on that left-hand side. And don't forget, you know, Brandon Williams was accountable as well as De Gea for Mason Mount's goal because Brandon Williams, you know, gave the ball away. And he made, you know, quite a few mistakes. But overall, I still think Brandon Williams has enjoyed a fantastic season for Man United because this has been his first full season in the senior squad, Brandon Williams. Obviously, you know, he's just come back from a head injury as Brandon Williams. If Luke Shaw had been available, uh, I think maybe, you know, Luke Shaw would have played, but Luke Shaw's out with an ankle injury at the moment. Uh, Fred, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. You know, I thought Fred had a pretty poor game. Uh, didn't look so good on the ball. Didn't look so good on the ball. Very, very sloppy. Uh, quite wasteful um, in possession and looks very, very exposed in that midfield. So he's only going to get a 4 out of 10. But overall, I still think, you know, Fred's enjoyed a very, very good season under Solskjaer. You know, this has been... Um, you know, he's, had, he's enjoyed a good season under Solskjaer. You know, we paid, what, around £52 million pounds for Fred. From Shakhtar Donetsk back in 28, was it 2018? I think we did get him in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window. Fred, though, never really got his opportunities under the Jose Mourinho era. So, Fred, for the vast majority of this season, has confounded his critics wrong. Uh, Nemanja Matic, going to give him a 5 out of 10. Did look OK on the ball. Did look OK on the ball at times, did Nemanja Matic. Um, made some... Did, Couple of good passes in that, but you know, weren't outstanding. Um, obviously, you know, since the resumption of the season, you know, Matic has been getting there ahead of Scott McTominay, but it was totally contrast, you know, before uh, lockdown and that because McTominay was getting there ahead of Nemanja Matic. Um, it wasn't so long ago that Nemanja Matic had signed a three year contract with Manchester United, you know. Uh, Bruno Fernandes. Again, I don't think he had the best of games. I'm going to give Bruno Fernandes a 6 out of 10. 
Um, I think he won some dangerous free kicks for us. Uh, Bruno Fernandes did have that uh, chance in the first half from the free kick. Uh, Caballero produced a fantastic save. Obviously, no, Bruno Fernandes has scored the penalty late on. Uh, I think he lacked that composure again. And, you know, that's unusual of Bruno Fernandes. But I think in the last few games, you know, he hasn't played, you know, to his potential best. But I still think Bruno Fernandes has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. You know, he has got now, is it, nine goals for the football club since his arrival from Sporting Lisbon. And he still has made the difference in the team as Bruno Fernandes. So I've, that's one thing I've got to say. That's one thing I've got to say. Uh, Marcus Rashford, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Uh, I think Marcus Rashford made a few decent runs at times. Um, obviously, you know, I had that big chance in the second half that just went wide. You know, I don't think, to be honest with you, know, we give Rashford enough service in the game. Uh, but he has been in scintillating form this season. Like I said, Rashford was Rashford was a big miss earlier on in the season because he was out with that back injury. I think Rashford's got three goals for the football club now since the resumption of the season. And definitely, no, Rashford is the foreseeable future for Manchester United. You know, Rashford, has, of course, has been playing out wide this season. So, um, yeah, we'll give him a 6 out of 10. Uh, Daniel James. Going to give him a 5 out of 10. You know, his pace looked very, very good at times in the game, but he didn't really do enough, did Daniel James. And I think he's been very, very inconsistent this year, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Obviously, you know, it was Daniel James's first start yesterday since the resumption of the season because we do know that Mason Greenwood has been playing ahead of Daniel James uh, quite recently in that. Uh, there has been stories coming out saying that we could loan Daniel James out for next season. You know, obviously, you know, we got him from Swansea last summer for just £15 million. So, look at it, you know, he was a cheap solution. You know, Daniel James can play on the left and he can also play on the right. For the vast majority of this season when we've played him, we've played him on the right, but he's actually, you know, supposed to be more effective from that left-hand side. So he's going to get, you know, a 5 out of 10. You know... Obviously, you know, Solskjaer brought some substitutions on in the game. Um, Anthony Martial, of course, came on. You know, I'm going to probably give Anthony Martial a 6 out of 10. Um... He did okay in some parts of the game, you know. Marshall, of course, was the one that got us the penalty because it was Callum Hudson Doy that had uh, challenged Anthony Martial. You know, Anthony Martial, like I said, though, has enjoyed a fantastic season for Manchester United. I think this is he's had two good seasons out of the five years he's been with us. You know, he's done well this season under Solskjaer. He did well in his debut season under Louis van Gaal era. And he has been playing in that number nine role this season as Anthony Martial. You know, but he still enjoyed a very, very good season, like I said. And this has now been his fifth season at Manchester United. So, yeah, like I said, he came on in the game. Uh, we saw Agarlo come on in the game. I'm going to give him a five. I don't think Agarlo really made an impact. By the way, Agarlo is our top goal, was our top goal scorer in the FA Cup. Um, obviously, we know that Agalo's with us until January uh, 2021. But after his loan spell with us, I presume he'll go back to Shanghai Shenu because don't forget, we've no option to buy Agalo or there's no obligation to buy. Obviously, you no know, Paul Pogba came on in the game. And I don't think he really made an impact when he came on Paul Pogba. So I'm going to give him a, what, 5 out of 10. Um, I think Paul Pogba in the last few games though, has looked a bit off the pace. Uh, but I think prior to the last few games, I think since the resumption of the season, Paul Pogba has made a fantastic impact. You know, by the way, hopefully we can get Paul Pogba this new long-term contract. You know, to end the uncertainty over his future. Um, it said recently that Paul Pogba is close to signing a five-year contract on Man United which will keep him at the club until 2025, but he said the contract extension will be announced at the end of the season. Like I said, I didn't really have a perception on Paul Popper earlier on in the season because he was out with that ankle injury. Um, at one point, it was looking very imminent that Popper was going to be leaving the football club because, don't forget, last summer, um, he was relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid. 
Uh, don't forget as well, uh, there were stories about Paul Pogba going back to Juventus because Pogba did enjoy four good years with Juventus. Um, there was talks about him going to PSG and Barcelona before. But I think now Paul Pogba wants to stay at Manchester United anyway. I still think his combination with Bruno Fernandes has been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely no, fantastic. Um, Fosu Mensu also came on in the game as well. Uh, Fosu Mensu will get a 5 out of 10. Didn't really you know, make an impact. Uh, by the way, Fosu Mensu uh, made his first appearance for Man United in just over three years in our 2 0 win against Crystal Palace, you know, because he was out with injury for a while, was Fosu Mensu. Mason Greenwood, um, he came on again. Don't think you know he made the best of impact when he came on, so I'm going to give him a, what, 6 out of 10. You know, Mason Greenwood seen, struggled a lot. But don't forget, you know, Mason Greenwood's recently had that ankle injury. So that's probably had a bad effect on his game. But I still think Mason Greenwood's enjoyed a superb season for Manchester United. You know, Mason Greenwood has scored 16 goals in all competitions for us this season. And Solskjaer did recently say that Mason Greenwood is undroppable and he said that he's ready to play for England at senior level. You know. So, yeah, so that is uh, your player ratings for the game. Uh, like I said, when Bay did come off with injury yesterday, Solskjaer changed formation, you know, he went with a 4-2-3-1 formation, but he has been going with that formation a lot on a regular basis this season uh, because he actually, you know, started the game with three at the back. But definitely, you know, Solskjaer was tactically naive and his team selection, you know, was definitely, you know, wrong. Uh, like I said, Solskjaer had made five changes from the 2-0 win against Crystal Palace. But I went through with you yesterday, didn't I? You know, the mistakes that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made. Um, he made a mistake by not starting Romero. Um, he made a mistake by not starting Pogba and Matominway. He also made a mistake by not starting Anthony Martial. And he also, you can say, he made a mistake by not starting Mason Greenwood. You know... But I do presume uh, for the game against West Ham, uh, Solskjaer you know, will make changes, you know, because that's our next game, is West Ham at Old Trafford. Obviously, you know, now our 19-game 19 19 game unbeaten run is over because it's our first defeat now in 19. And it was the first time we'd lost uh, to Chelsea under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. First time we lost to Chelsea under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. And um, like I said, you know, yesterday it was our 30th FA Cup semi-final and it was the first time we'd met Ch Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-finals for 24 years. You know, but like I said, you know, my match reaction, you know, Chelsea fully deserved to win the game. You know, they dominated the possession. They created some very, very good chances, you know, pressed very, very well and, you know, made it so difficult for us. And, you know, yeah, we were missing a few players, but look, on the other hand, you know, Chelsea were missing players as well. You know, they had Bulisic because it confirmed that he'd sustained an injury, so he wasn't playing. You know, Chelsea had Angolo Kante out. You know, they had that Billy Gilmore out. You know, so Chelsea, you know, didn't have all their best players out. I probably think Chelsea's best perform performer yesterday was Olivier Giroud. Scored the goal. Obviously, his runs on and off the ball were very, very good. Alonso had a good game for them. Could have got his name on the score sheet, but got on this, got an assist. Um, I thought William had a good game for them. Uh, I thought Reese James had a really, really good game for them. I think he had a couple of opportunities for Chelsea. And, you know, Chelsea, you know, do progress to the FA Cup final and they will be playing Arsenal. I thought we might have had a chance of beating Chelsea. The main explanations is because our record against the top six sides this season has been very, very good because we've taken 18 points against the top six sides this season. And plus, we've beaten Chelsea three times this season. You know, we've beaten them earlier on in the season at Stamford Bridge 2-0. And the nine of the 11 we went with yesterday played in that 2-0 win at Stamford Bridge. Uh, we're beating them 2-1 in the Cowbell Cup earlier on in the season. And we're beating them 4-0 at the start of the Premier League season at Old Trafford. Also beat them in the Cup last season by two goals to nil. 
So this is the reasons why I thought, you know, we may have had the chance of beating Chelsea. And plus recently, we have been in a good vein of form. But uh, Chelsea, you know, will want to win the FA Cup now because obviously, you know, they'll want to win their first tro trophy under Frank Lampard. And to be honest with you now, I think Frank Lampard has done very, very well in his first full season with Chelsea uh, because he has now gained that managerial experience. You know, Chelsea is the second club in his managerial career because uh, last season Lampard started his managerial career with Derby. And he actually you know, progressed Derby to the playoff final. You know, Frank Lampard knows Chelsea inside out because he enjoyed 13 years as a player with Chelsea, did Frank Lampard. And he's their all time leading goal scorer with 211 goals. But Lamp, from a Chelsea perspective, you know, they would just be delighted that Lampard has finally got one over Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, but Solskjaer's still winning. You know, it's 3 1 to Solskjaer now um, on the head to heads, obviously. And I've got to say regarding Chelsea, you know, they've done very, very good recruitment so far. Obviously, you know, they got Werner in from RP Lesbic for £48 million. They got Hakim Ziyech in February for around £38 million, pounds, was it, or 37 So they spent around £80 million on them two players. Uh, they're close now to getting Kai Havertz. There's been stories coming out today saying that Chelsea have agreed to get Havertz for around £80 million. Pounds. So if they do get him on the board, that it will be Frank Lampard's first sign this third signing as Chelsea manager and that will take their spending up to around 100, 160 million if they do get Havertz uh, they have obviously you know, been linked with Ben Chewell, you know, so Chelsea you know, are doing very very good business you know, the summer transfer window does open on the 27th of July and everyone thought you know, Chelsea would have crumbled you know, when they lost Eden Hazard uh, Hazard went to Madrid last summer and I don't think he's been too good at uh, Madrid he's had a few injury problems Hazard did endure seven years with Chelsea he was a, I think he was definitely you know, their best player don't forget at one point Chelsea did have that transfer ban they did have that transfer ban so anyway you know, we move on now to West Ham uh, Solskjaer of course is focusing now on our two uh, remaining games in the league uh, we can actually you know, afford to lose or draw one and win one and still finish in the top four because, you know, Leicester recently lost to Tottenham 3-0. But just to be safe, I think we need to win our two remaining games. The positive is is that uh, we are still unbeaten in our last 12 league games in all competitions. Uh, but our priorities now is the top four because we know how important Champions League qualification is. If we get Champions League qualification, we'll generate money and we'll be able to get the players that we want in. And the Europa League is a priority for us because that, that's the only chance now we've got of winning a trophy under Solskjaer this season. And won that first trophy under Solskjaer because we've not yet won out in terms of Suwer under Solskjaer and he has been at the football club for 18 months. You know, we haven't won a trophy for over three years and that's the first time since, like, is it the 1990s? You know, so they are our priorities now. But I'm disappointed, you know, that we didn't get to the FA Cup final. I actually you know wanted us to win the FA Cup, you know, because we have won 12 FA Cups at the moment. And, you know, we haven't won the FA Cup since 2016. And that was back under the Louis van Gaal era. But not to worry, you know, we did enjoy a good run. You know, we got past Wolves in the FA Cup third round replay 1 0. We beat Trammy in the fourth round 6 0. Beat. Derby in the fifth round 3-0 and beat Norwich in the quarterfinals 2-1. But there again, you know, last season we had a good, a good cut run, you know, we got to the quarterfinals. But I still think, you know, we are emerged as the favourites to win the Europa League, you know. Because obviously if we win the Europa League, we don't even need top four because if we win the Europa League, we'll get automatic qualification for the Champions League and all of that. But um yeah. But big decisions do need to be made in the summer transfer window, you know, of what players Solskjaer's gonna recommend in and what players you know he is gonna get rid of. You know, Solskjaer says I think Solskjaer said he's looking to make around three signings in the summer transfer window. And he's looking to get rid of around six players in the summer transfer window. I've heard I heard that we've already put six players up for sale, and that's Lingard, Sanchez. Smalling, Jones, Rojo and Diego Delo. You know, but if we sell players in the summer transfer window, of course, we'll generate money. Uh, Solskjaer's already 
uh, revealed his transfer plans and he's had a few meetings with Ed Woodward and he's told Ed Woodward, you know, that areas, you know, where he wants to strengthen up. Solskjaer said he wants to recommend the striker in, he wants to recommend the right winner in, and he's also looking to recommend a centre-half in, um, even though we have got seven centre-halves in the team. You know, one thing Solskjaer did confirm is that he will not tolerate any rotten apples in the squad. Because he warned our players quite a few weeks ago, he won't tolerate any rotten apples in the squad and that. But like, like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot of uncertainty regarding the summer transfer window. Obviously, you know the financial impact of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm not sure what our transfer budget's going to be. Um, I think our pre-season plans are up in the air at the moment, and so too is our transfer strategy in that. But the summer transfer window will be Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. I've got to say, we've done good recruitment under him so far. You know, we've brought five good players into the football club and spent just over £200 million on them. You know, so I'll credit, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for that. You know, but we've got to get the right players in the summer transfer window and that. Uh, like I said, though... In the in that 19 game unbeaten run, I saw a lot of improvements. Um, a lot of aspects of our game did really, really improve. Like I said, we were scoring more goals, we were creating more chances. The combinations in the team had improved in that. But you, you can, you know, this we still need to see improvements at Manchester United. I think we need to keep the ball better. You know, we need to switch the play better. Uh, we need to be quicker on the flanks. I still think there's certain players that I've got to step up to the plate. Maybe Solskjaer's decision making needs to improve a bit more. In that 90 game and beat and run, it did actually not improve, but he actually you know, did get it wrong yesterday. And that was the first time he got it wrong, you know, for actually you know, a while. Because earlier on in the season, you know, Solskjaer was very, you know, tactically naive and all of that, you know. But he did make a lot of rotation anyway earlier on in the season, reflecting on the amount of injuries that, you know, we did have. To be fair to Solskjaer, he's, you know, more or less given everybody their chances. Uh, like I said, the senior players have been given their chances, you know, the young players have been given their chances. But there again, there's players that are finding game time difficult at the football club. Diego Delos finding game time hard, Tahith Chong's finding game time hard. You know, James Garner, he's also finding game time very, very hard. But um, yeah, obviously, you know, a lot of players have left the football club since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in to Manchester United. And that. I think the recent player to leave the club was Angel Gomez and all of that. You know, but like I said, give Solskjaer another season. Even if we weren't to qualify for the Champions League or win the Europa League, I still think he will be at Manchester United next season. This is, you know, what I do believe. But like I said, you know, a lot of United fans would have been critical of Solskjaer yesterday. Um, we've been critical of the club's ownership for several years, which is the Glazers. We've been, obviously, you know, very, very critical of Woodward. You know... You know, reflects on the bad decisions he's made over the years and that. You know, Woodward's been with us since 2012 and the Glazers have been with us since 2005. Uh, like I said, in the last seven years, we've had different managers with different philosophies. We spent close to the billion pound range on players. You know, we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. But earlier on in the season, don't forget Solskjaer was very close to getting the sack. Earlier on in the season, we'd enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. Um, you know, don't forget um, at one point, Mauricio Pochettino was linked with a managerial role at Man United. Um, also to uh, Masmiliano Allegri, there's a lot of talks about him coming to Manchester United earlier on in the season. But um, yeah. But like I said, you know, Solskjaer won't be under pressure after one defeat. You know, if this bad vein of form was to continue from now to, to next season, that then he would be under pressure again. He really, really would. I, but I don't know if Solskjaer's a foreseeable future for Man United. You know, time will tell. What it? Time's going to tell if he is. I'm hopeful that we can get a title under Solskjaer. You know, like I said, next season our expectations will be to challenge for the title, you know, because we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.